He goes, well, that's weird because you have 15 projects to record this uh, this uh, this weekend. So it'd be really cool if all of you can rent out the oh, same Oh, this weekend? Yeah, this weekend. All practicums too, by the way. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> We're oh, bitching boy. about being in school. Yeah. But hey, this is our last semester. Yeah, graduation. The graduation series. In case you were confused by the title. The graduation series on... Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Oh, we got new mics. Local beer, local beer, and... Oh, oh no! (laughs) Well, that's the end of the episode. (laughs) Cahaba River Brewing. Sponsor us. Blondie. That's what I like. Hold on, I'm gonna get a napkin. I'll be honest, I don't... Well, I like it? Oh, no, the beer is good. Oh, okay. Very Bonnies? smooth, very nice. Oh. Uh, while I'm going to get a napkin, because I spilled beer on my... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> tell, us what, tell, the, tell the boys what the podcast is all about. Podcast is all about me and my friend Kyle and my friend Jake talking. We're That's both... What I say. Cause we're Because we're both... <laughs> We're, we're all three yeah, film majors. We're, film film we're, we're college students who don't know anything about anything, and we're going to attribute meaning to movies that maybe or maybe not actually have one. It doesn't matter. Well, they're, they're not supposed to have meaning. They're not supposed to, but guess what? They we do, find it. and we find Like it. in Book of Eli, the movie without meaning, and yet we somehow found a little <laughs> bit of meaning right in there. And like Nugget New Year's in Evil, there. who the, did we not have meaning at all. meaning in the meeting. Yeah. Was... Or Transformers, a uh, throwback episode, which also did not have much meaning. That was before us. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a podcast before time. <laughs> <laughs> like Lamb Before Time, which is an episode that's already out. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, we just, let's just name all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Ariana Grande or Drake? What? Brad Pitt or Payne Stewart or Doug the Pug? Chloe Kardashian? So as you can Red see, Tiger we uh, are looking a bit more professional. Winky, We've got our Mariska lights Hargitay, over here back Mario, there, which you can't see. You say that, and they're going to cut out the back yeah. ones. Yeah. Like, the uh, they're made out of cake Burke, cans. Ernie, okay, Rover, we're shooting in log. Snuffle up against like Burger logs, King, so Grimace, yeah. Ronald yeah. McDonald, yeah. two um, old guys from the balcony in the Muppets, Fran Tarkenton, Joe Montana, Joe Montana, Eddie Murphy, Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan, BTS, Eugene Levy, Okay. Love it. Shut the fuck up and listen, man. I'm giving you a list and of people well, who could have done. Too. Danny DeVito, Andy Kaufman, Jim Morrison, any one of the fucking Beatles. Pete Best, George Carlin, Dad, Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, Ice T, Ice Cube, Vanilla Ice, Elvis fucking Presley, Priscilla Presley, Seth Meyers. What about Seth Meyers? Or for that matter, Jay Leno. Conan's not really doing much right now. Will Ferrell, Howard Stern, Baba Booey, Robin Williams, Quiver. Fucking Telly's abolished, <laughs> Freddie Stroma, James Gunn, what the fuck, oh, dude? Those, those last two aren't even things. Alice I Cooper, did. Ozzy Osbourne, Sharon Osbourne, Bill Cosby, he just got out, he's got time on his hands. Amy Winehouse. Dude, dude Amy I Winehouse is fucking dead. dead. Optimus Prime, Shipwreck, Cobra Commander, the uh, fucking cunts okay, from Riverdale. All right, now most of those, uh, you're right, so could probably go to prison, but I would never put <laughs> Ariana Grande in there. She looks too innocent. Possibly true. Nation. Possibly. Um, from yeah, a previous, <laughs> from a from a previous guest on the epi- okay, on the okay. podcast, uh, our our boy uh, Sam Thickman, so he actually I know, I get it. was yeah, on the okay, episode fine. Killer Sofa, right? I'm just gonna which I, which just released a few weeks ago. Which just which is in our series, and he was like, "Hey, you should do Green Street Hooligans," and I was like, "Okay, cool. Email that to us," and he never did. But it's okay because Sam did? is a dear friend. And helps me get jobs and stuff. So. Yes. I'm sort of curious as to why, knowing what this podcast is about, he would recommend uh, this movie. I? Why? Well, wait. Sam Thickman? Yeah. Oh. Well, because... Who, who did you think Well, because he, he recommended Killer Sofa, which is, you know, sounds no, like a... No, 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 no. Mary did. Yeah, remember Mary he was he was on it. Oh, well, he was yeah. on Killer Sofa. Why is this That's okay, because man. we feel... Oh, wait, no. Nope. Sorry, Sam. Love you. Um... Anyway. Oh, look, look at that, Kyle. Look, he's getting the, the pink right there on the side of his face. Yeah, he's got pink eye. <laughs> From eating jelly beans. All right, we're four minutes in. Uh, we should um, go ahead and just talk about what this movie... And he recommended okay. this movie, Green Street Hooligans. <laughs> and for the longest time, I kept forgetting about oh, it, and I kept thinking it was called Rolling Green Hills. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and it's not? 
Mm-hmm. Go on. No, no, you you continue. I'm I'm doing my own thing with Chris here. You know how we do talking during Chris's bit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, now it's, I got gotcha, you. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> That's okay. You admitted to talking over me. Shh. Go, and go. so, Chris, go ahead and do the recap. I figured. Huh? Are you talking about hashtag Dash? No. no. Love you, Dash. Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh, what's your phone? I thought you were moving the light. Okay. Uh, recap. 2005, Elijah Wood. Uh, go. Okay, yeah. Green Street Hooligans. Movie, 2005, starring Elijah Wood, what he just said. Elijah Wood is a dude named Matt Buckner who uh, is at Harvard University, but he's not, he, he's at Harvard universe, university, university, but he's packing his bags because he got expelled for a little bit because he had cocaine in his belongings. But it wasn't his cocaine, it was his roommate's uh, cocaine, uh, Jeremy, who was a little, you know, a snobby rich kid who uh, is part of a very well-known family, so, you know, he, nothing bad is going to happen to him, so he essentially just paid Matt 10000 uh as, like, an I'm sorry uh, gift to getting him kicked out of Harvard. And so uh, Matt, you know, down in his luck, uh, takes that $10,000 and uses part of it to fly all the way over to uh, the, the, the great land of, of Britain, to meet his, Britain. to 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 stay with his uh, sister for a little bit, who is married to a British guy uh, named named Steve, and he stays with them for for a little bit, and they chat and all of that, and all of a sudden Steve's brother uh, walks into the house. His name is Pete, and he's kind of a rough around the edges guy, and you know carrying on and trying to get his brother Steve to go to a football game with him. Which doesn't really seem like it'd be that big of a deal, but Steve seems very adamant to not going. And and he's like, hey, how about you take, you know, uh, my wife's brother with you so that you can kind of, you know, get him out of our hair and we can have a date night. And then he's like, oh, but I don't want to take a, a yank with me. And uh, he, he's not Scottish, but his dialect kind of sounds Scottish. And It's uh, not full Scott. It's not. But well, it's Scottish. I was, <laughs> I was talking to Jared about it uh, earlier. Because he's very much into the yes. European football, and uh, yeah. well, no, yeah, because no, he, it, football is sorry, European sorry, soccer. Yeah, he, he's sorry. a pian. Yeah, yeah. No, he pooped himself yeah. though. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll get into that later. So it's about pee-pee, uh, it's about poo poo. We Pete, stay stinky. We go doo doo. <laughs> I love that. Pete reluctantly takes uh, Elijah Wood <laughs> to the ball game, and uh, you know. He tries to get him to, to cough up the money, uh, but then he kind of, you know, tries to stand his ground. And and uh, he's like, you know what? I like you. Maybe you can learn something from us. Maybe maybe we can be, you know, good pals. And so he takes him to the bar to, to you know, pregame for the game, getting drunk, having some beers, having a jolly old time. And he introduces him to all of his friends who are... Uh, you know, they, 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 they're they kind of a little too close, almost like, you know, you would say as close as a, as a gang of, of friends would be, hint, hint, because they're a fucking gang, essentially. And uh, gang, one gang. guy uh, walks in a little late. His name is Di... How do you, how do you say his name? I'm trying, to fi- I'm trying to find it on here. Uh, Bava? Bava? What's well, Shit, Bava, why can't I find but... it? Which which guy is it? Okay, Bover. Yeah, yeah. Bover. Bover. Yeah, yeah. It's a weird name, but Bover comes in, and uh, he doesn't like Americans all too much, and he doesn't like that uh, Pete. Although all, he and all the other guys are getting along with with Elijah Wood, Matt, um, uh, Dover is very prejudiced to to Americans, and uh, anyway, probably because we beat their ass. Yeah. In 1812. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> but anyway, you know, they, they drink, they have a good time. Elijah Wood fits right in, and uh, they're, they're all drunk, and they're all happy, and they go over to the ball game, and, they, and they, they're at the ball game, and they have a jolly old time. And uh, as they're making their way out... Downtown. Um, man, the, the fans from Manchester United um, ends up... Uh, Wait, hold up, shit. 83, sorry. God damn it. What? Sorry. Hold up. Did you run out of breath, or did you lose Yeah, no, I, I lost my space. Well, it's right here. Okay. Too. No, I think, I, think I'm, I think we're right here. 
Okay. Okay. Birmingham. So he's Paris. on the way to the game, right? Yeah. No, he's leaving the game. Okay. Okay, so he's leaving, he's leaving the game. The game and, and he's, he's and he, mugged and he, by three Birmingham fellas. Bur- yeah, yeah, it's Birmingham. And no, they're British, so they say Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. So the fans Bur- from Birmingham sit from the Bur- Birmingham Bur- City team uh, jump jump Matt. Some Muppets. And uh, his his friends help him with that. Barnyard. And then. Um, and then there, oh, and then more of the reinforcements of Birmingham Christy City Hooligans. just start like trampling all over them, and then uh, Matt actually gets up and starts defending himself, and the rest of the uh, of Pete's friends, who are by the way fans of uh, the Green Street Elite, um, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> what are you pointing at? Shit. <laughs> are you, I'm trying to get him to get his preference. It's Blue's Clues. He goes pow pow. Okay. Not you. I'm talking to Kyle. All right. Once they're once they're leaving the game, uh, the the fans from Birmingham City uh, yeah, jump go. Matt, and then um, Pete and his friends, who are fans of Green Street Elite, uh, they um, they help him out, and Matt gets to his own feet and starts, you know, defending for himself, and they and they see that, and they're like, hey, and so, you know, after they, you know, get off. Uh, clean with a little bit of cuts and bruises nothing too bad uh they they induct them into uh into their union and now the the most important thing about this is that um pete and his guys who are part of uh the firm of the green street elite um a firm is essentially in in this movie i don't know if it's a real thing well i it was a real thing uh a while back Mm -hmm. but um it's essentially like a mob surrounding a specific uh, football team, and uh, like they they place bets and do things like that. So it's essentially a gang. Um, but they induct him in, and a very important thing about uh, Green Street Elite and uh, Green Street Elite's firms is that they do not take kindly to journalists because they they seem to be their biggest enemy. Um, and what's important about this is that Matt was journalism major. Um, but he's purposely telling Pete that he, uh, majored in history so that he can, you know, still hang with them, although he's not writing anything about them, so we think. So anyway, um, now that we're caught up, uh, Pete and his boys, uh, head to another game with, for, uh, Manchester United, and I'm just gonna read from the Wikipedia here to, to kind of, <laughs> to, to, because we're already running out of time, um, so Matt ends up sneaking into the train, even though Pete tells him not to not to go there because you know Manchester gets a, gets a little too out of hand sometimes. He sneaks on the train to help and uh, to help to help when they are warned that forty of the Manchester United firm members are waiting for them at the train station that the train is going to put them at. And so um, Bover, hearing this, pulls the emergency brake. They get off the train, and then uh, Matt. <clears throat> um, uh, bribes a dude to to put them in their truck and have Matt sit in the passenger seat. And uh, shit, uh, so they can uh, make it to the train station and get the jump on the uh, forty members instead of just going right by them. They do decide the, to pick the fight, and it's a it's a pretty crazy fight. Um, uh. Matt gets beat up pretty bad, and um, they eventually have to go back home. And uh, Bover is now jealous of Matt's oh, wow. rise in the ranks, considering <clears throat> that this, you know, Yank is is now you Fucking know Yank. more popular than him. So uh, Bover talks to Tommy Hatcher, who is the head of the rival firm of Green Street, um, the NGO. And after one of the members of the GSE sees Matt meeting his father, a journalist for the Times, because Matt's Matt's father comes back because uh, to to Europe, even though he hasn't been in his life for a while, and tells him, "Hey, you don't need to be hanging around these hooligans. You need to you need to be doing what you were supposed to do at Harvard." Harvard. And so uh, they see him hanging at the Times. They think that he's a spy uh, for for the London Times. And so they assume that that Matt is is just a spy. And so Bobber informs Pete of this, and uh, Steve goes um, to to the bar that they're at to warn Matt. 
that, uh, you know, things, things are about to get bad. And, uh, Matt discovers in him talking and, and, and him trying to warn him that, uh, Steve is the founder and former leader of the Green Street Elite. He is, he is, you know, the major, he's the president, essentially, and he retired because, uh, one time they were fighting their rival gang, the NGO, and he saw Tommy, the leader of, of that firm, he saw his son, uh, essentially die in the in the middle of a fight his skull got crushed and he was just a 12 year old boy and uh and so because of that steve vowed never to return and his wife uh matt's matt's sister told him that uh she will leave him if he ever you know gets mixed up in that again <clears throat> meanwhile bobber is being a little snake and he's telling tommy uh, that, you know, they, they got a journalist working for him and that he's a threat to both, uh, the GSE and, uh, Tommy's firm. And so Tommy, uh, has Bobber take him and all his guys out to the bar that they're at. And, uh, Tommy, uh, betrays Bobber and then beats the shit out of him. And they bust into the bar and beat the shit out of everybody. And Tommy stabs Steve in the neck. Which is he's he's mortally wounded, and that's they have to. Here. And they, that's what happened. Here. Yeah, 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 like Kyle. Throw that that's up. yeah, Throw that up. like like what Dash <laughs> did to Kyle. So anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, Chris, they rush Steve over to the hospital, and uh, Matt and Pete both are like, "Okay, we." Oh well, <laughs> that's what. You, damn, that's what you get. Yeah. Okay. Nice peek there, boys. Nice peek there, Furter boys. <laughs> So, oh God, so, uh, Matt and Steve were like, oh shit, we got to get back at Tommy and, and, Tommy. and Shannon, uh, Steve's wife, uh, basically tells, uh, Steve that, well, I'm happy you're alive, but we need to go back to America because now you've put a target on our family's back and we have to go home all over, all over fucking football, you know? That's the fucking crazy part about this. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Steve is okay, but he's in, you know, pretty critical condition. One could and, say. and so Pete, uh, he's 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 mad at Matt because he feels like that he's to blame uh, for all of this. And now it's 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 Pete's uh, it's Pete's duty to convince the rest of the group that Matt is not a spy for them. And uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. OK, I should hang on. Hang on. OK, OK. So, so anyway, he convinces them that Matt is still part of, part of them, and Matt kind of helps them convince by agreeing to go fight a war, essentially, with the rival firm mm -hmm. at the Millennium Dome the next day for a final brawl. Matt and Bobber show up to fight for the GSE, but Shannon turns up with uh, her son, and, and Matt is like, Hey, hey, Shannon, uh, we're fighting instead of just, you know, not calling her attention at all uh, because things are getting pretty rough right now. And so Shannon, you know, pulls up to the brawl and gets out of the car. And then Tommy, because he's a fucking animal, decides to get back at, at Steve even more by, you know, hurting his wife and his son and uh, Pete uh, trying to save them. Um, uh, jumps on jumps on Tommy, starts beating him up, and uh, she drives away, and uh, Tommy gets the best of Pete and fucking kills him. Pete is dead. Yeah, he, he just dies. He gets yeah. beat the shit. He literally gets the shit beat up. Yes, like he well, he he dies. Well, he when poop. you die, you poop yourself. And oh, then okay. everyone on all sides just kind of stand around and mourn, and it was like, oh shit, we were actually hurting people real bad. Mm -hmm. Oh no. And so fight's over. Pete dies, and Matt goes back home to America, and uh, you know, uh, in a in a direct address says that uh, you know, uh, Pete kind of taught him how how to live. And so he uh, he confronts the man who uh, the myth, the pinned, pinned all the cocaine stuff on him and got kicked out of Harvard. He confronts him in the middle of a meeting and uh, gets him to admit that uh, it was his cocaine, puts it on a recording device, and then the guy gets all mad about him about it, and then Matt puts him in a fucking chokehold, 
and threatens to, to punch him. And then he's like, okay, I'll give you your old life back. And he's like, ha ha. And then Matt walks out of the place and he chants the, the whole, the whole battle cry for the GSE. The end. Something about bubbles is what it is. Yeah, even though, you know, Spongebob would, would lead you to believe that that's not what they chant in bars, but this is about bars. We're going on a baby hug, yeah. and don't oh, think okay. we don't know how to weed them out. out. Uh, all right, all right, boys. So, I do want to point out, though, that you said that the GSC, uh, Green Street Elite, what does NGO mean? Uh, Like, non non-organic. I can't remember. <laughs> I thought that they were with... Uh, well, because they said Millwall. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a difference there. Doesn't matter. Uh, maybe I've heard that Screen Street, Green Street Elite isn't even a real thing. It's a non-profit organization that operates independent of no, any government, typically one up, whose purpose to NGO yeah. in is Green to Street address... Elite. Let me fix this. <clears throat> Excuse me. NGO, non-GMO. That's Green what I was Street thinking of. <laughs> GMO. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, apparently there are two sequels to this movie. I don't know if I they won't. are directly connected. Green Street Two, Stand Your Ground, yeah, NTO, huh? And and Green Street Three is Never Back Down. <laughs> don't back down. Hooliganism. Stay is is Elijah Brown. Wood in all of them? No, I, I, I wouldn't. I, don't I wouldn't think, think so. so. I don't think so. It does not say. It doesn't say what the NTO is. Millwall, or what NTO? Um, it's no, he's not on there, so I assume not. Okay, well, interesting. Anyway, um, wait now, no, this is an NGO. What the heck? Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, but they do say, um, is it Pete? Pete says, or is it Bova? Bova, Bova says we don't lie outsiders, and then later he goes. All coppers, all journos. So not only is he an outsider, he's also a copper. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, journo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what later believed to be. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what is this movie about, boys? Okay, I'll let you go first, Kyle. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Actually, Chris, I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, okay. I'll let you go. Go ahead, Chris. Um, yeah. Uh, Kyle? There you go. There you go first. I, well, I, I think it I think it has something to do with um, with um, the dangerous element of um, of community and how that manifests itself in the masculine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I feel like this movie is kind of similar to uh, Fight Club in a way. Uh, mm. Save the they ending. do they do fight each other. Save the ending, but um, <clears throat> of a Fight Club. But I feel like this movie in a whole is about how, you know, anything, is, uh, even sports, if it, if it involves a strong following and a set of rituals, no matter what that is, it can be somewhat considered a religion in, mm -hmm. in, in its core. Um, and that can have both, you know, good effects and, and bad effects on, on, you know, who you are as a person. But uh, regardless, it does transform you as a person, for better or for worse. Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I kind of a uh, mix between the both of you. Um, it, it is. I think it's about men who are religious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a there is a strong level of camaraderie mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. film, a very heightened sense, um, especially within like some of them, most of them really, well, kind of are at least somewhat loyal to each other based on the fact simply that they are British. Yeah. Or Londonese, however yeah. however you say that. Well and then literally the very the only reason why uh Frodo isn't accepted is because he's not from mm -hmm. London. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Well yeah and that and that and that was getting kind of more so into what I was gonna talk about with like the idea of um, uh, tribalism, yeah, and how I think that's just default for people. I mean, it makes sense, you know. It's like this is what you know, this is what's safe to a certain extent. So anything outside that is, you know, going to be terrifying. I mean, that that is the breakdown of the known and the unknown, right? The known is your city; it's walled off, and everything in there is is safe. It, it may be a little tyrannical, um, sure, and and it takes you know the divine hero to. Uh, 
to <laughs> who who journeys outside of the city and can come back and transform uh, that tyranny. But you know that for that city, for all intents and purposes, is is safe and everything outside of that. You know whether it be nature or 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 other people. Um, you know there everything outside those walls can kill you and is trying to. It is a bit xenophobic, I think, in in just that presentation. Yeah, but. I stray away from that because eventually they do accept uh, yeah. Frodo. And not only Frodo, but also Shannon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who uh, was married to uh, Steve. Yeah. Right, that's Steve, yeah. the one who died uh, by being brutally... Well, he didn't die. No, he didn't die. Being stabbed brutally in the neck, mortally in the neck with a broken mm-hmm. bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is interesting that, that literally just his presence and willing to willingness to become invested in the culture like oh, okay cool you're cool what's up yeah yeah well the thing is um yeah i think that uh like these firms it's a lot more <clears throat> intimate than just like you know where where you're from it's it's not necessarily uh nationalism it's not ne- necessarily uh, ne- necessarily like a xenophobia um because i feel like that if he was you know, with another firm, you know, or, or had or had been with another firm, it no chance of him, you know, hanging out with them at all. But like they were able to accept him in, even though he was American, because he felt right. He felt right into you know the Green Street <clears throat> elite I, and, I, I, and I, their rituals and all that. I, I think it's possible. What you're saying is that like this is the only group that would accept him, and that makes them different. Um, I uh, think. I. I think that's possible. I think, however, I, I do think that had he been in a different group, assuming that the people were people that he could get along with, you know, like um, uh, the other guy, I can't remember his name. Um, is it Pete? Uh, yeah, Pete. Uh, Charlie Dunham? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Hun- Hunnam. Hunman? Hunnam is what it says here yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it's the actor or the character? The, the actor. actor. Oh, okay. Well, well oops. Oh, oh, Dunham. Yeah, you're right. Dunham okay, that's is crazy. The character, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> so, anyways, because uh, <laughs> that, that, hey, remember that... at the at the very beginning of the episode when Kyle was like, "Yeah, I'm stupid." I have not gotten a lot of sleep. <laughs> um, so, okay, but I, I I do think um if he had been in another group and they were able to get along uh, to the extent that he was able to in this group. I think it would have gone kind of the same way Um, because I I think it's very clear like he's you know he's searching for an identity Elijah Wood's character is at the beginning of this and he finds that in the community and once he's able to learn those lessons and that that he does throughout the film then he's able to go off and be his own person again but that's because he took time to have some sort of communal purpose and and in doing so, that reinvigorated the individual spirit, I, I, I suppose. Which, which is interesting, because a lot of times, groupthink can get you into a lot of trouble. Oh, and it does. Uh, don't cancel us. Yeah. Or do. We don't want you anyway. Um, yeah. And so it is interesting to see that uh, ingratiation into the GSE. <laughs> Integration? Uh, no. Well, okay, okay, okay. okay. Ingratiation. Okay, okay. Um, into it, it's not a real word. I I didn't know what the word to use. I think I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the ingratiation into right. that group and and come out of it on the other side better and more individual than you were before. Yeah. you were in the group. Yeah, right. Well, and and I think and and it's because he has a line at the very end. I don't know if this is necessarily word per word, but this is kind of what I wrote down, is that he was taught when to fight and when to stop fighting, right? And I think you could express that as he was taught why to fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, uh, it's um, oh man, we, we, we said this a lot, but it, it falls along the same lines of, um, at least in a... In a conceptual level the same idea as uh, and i'll explain this uh from barnyard uh, a strong man stands up for himself and a stronger man stands up for others it's that same kind of saying where it's a strong man uh knows how to fight 
but a stronger man knows when to fight. Mm -hmm. So it's got that same kind of yeah. uh, applicable meaning yeah. in terms of its structure. No, I, I agree. And and that's what's uh, kind of interesting about his character is that he is very meek at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's being around this ultra-masculine element of this yeah. uh, of this firm. And, uh, and in doing so, that awakens something that's still within him and he's able to take that into the world and 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 everything and i think that's i think that's really interesting it really is um yeah it, and he says too and, and along with the, the the masculinity he says uh he says once he got not like not the exact he says once he got a taste for the fight and and once he realized that he could he wasn't made of glass then yeah. he lived for the fight mm -hmm. which seems to be uh, the entire uh, firm's culture, just as as a, as a uh, structure of firm, not the GSE or the NTO or NGO, uh, but literally just what that is. Mm -hmm. It seems to be all about fighting, because it's it's presented like you said. They're like like a gang that supports a football team, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we hardly ever see like the sport. Yeah. Uh, but it's almost as if it's literally just about pride. Yeah, well, he says at one point, uh, Pete does, that it's about uh, reputation. Um, and I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. And I think that's made clear at the uh, at the end of the yeah. film, at the final fight, what they're fighting for. But, you know, it, it almost puts on this facade of being like, yeah, you know, it's for the reputation. But I think they all know that it's deeper than that, you know. Um, you, uh, when you when you're talking about that, are you talking about uh, Joey or whatever his name was dying? And and since those ten years, or are you speaking even before then? It was it was deeper than that. Because that's, I, I I think maybe in those past ten years um, that it solely applies to that. But I think it could have been. Well, and this is the thing. Like I don't, you know, there are sociopaths out there, right? There but, are. Uh, have you ever seen you? <laughs> have you ever seen yourself? I know the show, but still. Put up um, a mirror. Have you ever seen you reflect, uh, editor? Just reflect back and the reflect audience. the viewer. Yeah, oh. reflect the viewer back. The individual viewer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll, but we'll just put up a catalog of faces of all our, <laughs> yeah. of all our regular viewers. Yeah, yeah. All right, Hayden, you're up. Yeah, yeah got him. Mom. Uh, yeah, mom. Mommy. Who's this? Mom. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> we are just talking about you. Anyway, she, she doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. Nope. <laughs> Found her. It's okay. Um, anyways. Yes, I, 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 do, I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm just thinking from her perspective. <laughs> I was just like, I'm... <laughs> fuck. It's, it's probably that back one. This one? No, oh, one more. Hey. One more. Hey, that's cute though. We'll have the pig hold the, the one mic. more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is that not tightened? I don't know. Uh, the fuck is all the way loose? You're technical the last difficulties. To, to I didn't it. touch that one. All right, we'll cut this all out. Shit. Oh my god! <laughs> it might have been me. It was you. It, I said it might have been. They can hear me because I was bringing it to the mic. Yeah, there you which go. Okay. They can hear me. And I'm editing this one, so they won't know that I'm saying that it was me. Yeah, we won't know. They won't Oh, do you like my monologue for uh, the that I that I edited in for the uh, um, New Year's Evil? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, if you have seen that, watch that it. That was again. a good bit two months ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's a bit? Uh, um, bacon bits. The hell was I talking about before that? Uh, we were talking about uh, how there's something Hi, deeper uh, in in the fighting in the firm. Yeah. So than right, right, right. So I don't think like again there are sociopaths out there, but I don't think you just fight. Just for the fun. <laughs> Stop. I agree. While they're talking, I'm going to talk about it. I agree. Uh, you guys, you guys can come in. This is part of the part of the show. Hi, Ash. Dip your head in there. Say hi. No, I don't want to say hi. Say hi, Avery. Man. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, mom. Hey, I'm Avery. I produce the theme song and also the non-existent credit theme. Uh, uh, revisionist history. Check for it out. That one out episode because it was themed. Yeah. Um. Uh, but but see, and, and this is where it, it kind of goes back, I feel like, to my original uh, idea of the theme is camaraderie. So there may not even be an actual reason, but, like, literally, because they are so close, tied 
through uh, this firm, they fight for each other. Right. Right. No, you're you're definitely true, or you're definitely right. Um, Correct. The, the 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 question is is like, well, what what compels people to risk violent death or 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 major like injuries at the hands of another? You know, what compels someone to risk that? And is it really just reputation, or is it or is it to fight for the other person? Well, and yeah. it's like, you know, maybe maybe it's not enough to fight for the memory of what was taken, but. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's more than enough to to fight for what you could lose, yeah. you know, because yeah. th- th- that is that aspect in there where they're like, the the guy died ten years ago. Yeah, the, and the kid, the kid, the yeah. kid, and it's like he fights for mm-hmm. this memory of something that's gone, right? But um, but Pete is fighting for for what he could lose, mm-hmm. yeah. and and he wins. You know, they get away. Like he loses. You know, he dies. But what he's fighting for. Is still there. That yeah. legacy right. propels them. So, so whereas, um, were you about to say something? Oh well, well, yeah. I mean, I think it's because it's it's also just the brotherhood as well. Is because mm. because the other firms pose a threat to essentially you know their rituals and their lifestyle, and if you take that away or or you know extinguish it. Um, you know what? What else does does a man have than than his family, especially the one that he has made? Family. Right. But um, it's because you you know, you still have, <laughs> despite what little you truly deserve, what you what you have is what you should fight for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so this may be. So we're about to get uh, into uh, film theory right here, um, and really narrative theory. So, and this may be why. Millwall um, is the Excuse antagonist me. of the film. Um, so typically, in in a, in a script, uh, and this isn't this is one of those things that make a technically good script not necessarily a good script, but in terms of technicality, it's good. Is basically there are two opposing uh, views of life. So the protagonist usually has one that is supposedly going to persevere through the film, and the antagonist has typically the opposite or uh, adjacent of that. And so, with what you're saying, Kyle, uh, the GSE presents the idea of fighting for what we have and what we have to gain, mm-hmm. whereas Millwall is fighting for what has been lost. Right. Yeah. So they're, they're stuck in the past. Mm-hmm. That's, why, that's what makes them the antagonist, is there's two conflicting views, yeah. and the director is basically saying, hey, this is what we should do. Do this is why we should fight, mm-hmm. not for what we've lost, but for what we have, what we can gain. Yeah. So, right. Film theory. Um, I think an interesting quote uh, to point out in this movie is that uh, when Pete is ex- <clears throat> when Pete is explaining to Matt uh, the rivalries, the rivalries when he's talking about uh, Tommy's firm, uh, I think that's Millwall. Um, uh, he essentially equates their rivalry to uh, the Israelis and and. Uh, the Palestinians, which mm-hmm. which definitely you know suggests that that history of uh, of, of violence between them. I don't remember so, that quote. So, you don't. <laughs> yeah, no. You don't? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. There's a couple. But it times. was also hard to understand anything that they were saying. It was. Couldn't they talk like they all right? And it was just a lot of like multiple men yelling incoherently. Said, yeah. 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 <coughs> also, the uh, YouTube captions for this movie was fucking hilarious because oh, I, even I it didn't know what it was saying. Yeah, I didn't. And I didn't have the captions on. At, Which video? Did at you? one point, when Pete was screaming, it put in hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was fucking hilarious. Were, uh, were, were yours auto generated? Yeah. Okay. What the yeah. one I found it did have them embedded in. Oh, okay. Damn. Maybe I'll have to rewatch what the uh, oh, it was auto generated captions. It was on. pretty fucking funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there, there were a couple um, political statements that I thought were very interesting to be kind of intertwined with this film, and I, and I was wondering if they would mean anything, and I'm sure they do, but they're mm-hmm. subtle enough to where if you blink, you miss them, and mm-hmm. well, the, I the, blinked. The so. Palestinian thing was the only th- uh, one that I remember. Yeah. There, there was another one that was... Uh, Talk about war or something. Yeah, well, he references yeah. the British being shot by the U.S. in a war that yeah. the U.S. started, Yeah, and I, I looked it up because... My knowledge of, of history essentially ends with the 80s, which is where all my textbooks ended. Um, so and then it, and then it picks right back up at like 2012. 
because mm-hmm. um, that's when I started paying okay. attention to yeah, current go ahead, events. Go ahead and tell me there's not a conspiracy. So, yeah, I have like a 20-year gap or 20 or 30-year gap yeah. of, of history. Kyle literally knows nothing. Kyle literally knows nothing that happened between 1980. Yeah. Or, well, you know what? I'll give you 1920. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'll give you I'll give you an extra 60 years you I'll, don't know. I'll give you 1990 to 2012. Those yeah. years, Kyle doesn't know anything yeah, about history. Yeah, those 22 years are just, they didn't he, happen. He hasn't. He has I, know, no, I know the iPod no, came out. He has, <laughs> he has no idea what 9-11 is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but but, but he anyways, does remember Spider-Man, which came out the same year as 9-11. But that's not history. No, it that's came out 2002. Oh, um, wow. Idiot. It was, however, the first promo for it did feature the trade, World Trade Centers. It did. And it, they took it out of the yeah, movie, no, that no, scene. No, 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 I'm just saying, like, they took it. There's this weird thing in the trailer where there's these buildings, and then the next one, they're not there. Why the fuck are we making this a bit? I don't know so, what a, I don't know what a but bit is. Anyways, that I I believe because this movie came out in 2005 and I just looked up British officers shot or I, I looked up British troops British. killed by the US. And, uh, that's how they talk. And the the one that would make more most sense from like a screenwriting perspective yeah. was what happened in 2003 and all it is is just that uh like one or two, like I think it was like three or four people in total were shot in March and April. Uh, during the Iraq War, in two thousand three. I mean that is and and right and so I think that, that as far as that's a timeline a for making the movie that makes the most sense. Yeah, four people. That's more than COVID. I put room around that to cut it out. Yep. I thought it was pretty good though, huh? Mm. Anyway, so yeah, the Iraqi War and killing the British. Yeah. Um, that was the only other thing that I kind of really caught. Um, can we talk about Bova for a second? Mm-hmm. Bova. So number one, number one, what a weird name. <laughs> well, they're also, British. Also, before I do that, firm. You know how like the Brits, uh, the Brit I- is, mm-hmm. um, say like chips instead of like fries or whatever, and the lifts instead of the elevator, and lose at a bathroom. They'll say crisps instead of chips. Yeah. Yeah. Even though a chip is a fry, but a fry is a crisp is a. God damn it! You guys biscuit. are fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, I know you guys came up with the shit. <laughs> 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 like, what? We improved it, though. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, anyway, uh, firm sounds like a British term. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Well, like, like yeah. Like, yeah. instead of calling it a gay, they call it a firm. For whatever reason. It's a lot more form- formal. Because it's a lot more formal. <laughs> formal. Which is weird, because I feel like the firm itself is... A lot less, like cohesive than a gang or a mob, yeah. Or mafia, like they go to a bar, they yell, and then they go to places to fight people. They're just hooligans. That's all they are. They're not That's, gangsters. Yeah, they're, they're just, just hooligans. They just, you know, cause a ruckus, and whenever, like, someone actually does die, they, they piss their pants and cry for a little bit. What? But you killed So they're not gang. actually a gang, they're just, you know, a bunch of guys. Bunch of, bunch of guys. A bunch of guys. They're just a bunch of men. 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 But, ugh. Bover, he's the one who was like, we don't accept outsiders. And also not coppers and journos. So... He never liked uh, Frodo to begin with. You could <laughs> yeah. basically call him um, Saruman. Saruman. Yeah, Sauron <laughs> or Saruman. Um, definitely not Gandalf. But uh, yeah, and so when he finds out he's a fucking journo, uh, he basically goes to Tommy and is like, Which was hey, a very bitch move. It, uh, I, you know, now that you say that, throw it up. Uh, I wrote in my notes, uh, Millwall attacked GSE. Tommy uh, attacked Terry, or not Terry, Steve. I put Terry in there. I don't know why. Mm. Steve. And then all because Bover's a bitch. He is. He yeah. really is. Um, and he is. because. It, it, but it's interesting because it seems like he felt betrayed by his own brothers. 
And then he literally betrayed, betrayed his own them. brothers. Yeah. Which got Pete killed. And then Bava was like, ah. And it's crazy and he because. Saw I was the, um, when uh, Terry got stabbed and they carried him out, Bava was like freaking out. Yeah. Yeah, what if she, you've seen, he caused all of it. If you've seen Arcane, remember before... Uh, Bava should have died. <laughs> yeah, really? Anyway. Um, when... Uh, not Powder, the pink-haired one, goes to save Marcus, whatever his name is, and then they leave and there's a scene that Powder's freaking out. Yeah, that's what Bava did. Yeah. They don't know what I'm talking about. But no. you do. Well, um... I think also there's um, an interesting element of the difference between those two uh, gangs is that um, Bavar um, has this uh, dynamic of power as the head, whereas Pete has more of a uh, dynamic of, uh, I guess, cooperation is a, is a better... Um, is Well, it's not the best term, but I can't think of the word. But I think it's... You know that it's it's certainly true. It's like you know hierarchies, which they exist in you know all of humankind. They exist in the animal kingdom too, but hierarchies have a top, and the person at top does have power. But it's it's what it, it's an appeal. Whether it okay, here's the question: Is it an appeal to authority or an appeal to power? Because there is overlap on them, but they're not the same thing. So. To put things in, in a, a bit more layman's terms, imagine, so we take Book of Boba Fett, right? So the Millway and, and Tommy is Jabba and Pete or uh, Steve, because they're, they're both kind of in charge. Yeah. Uh, Pete is technically in this film, uh, is Boba. So Boba says, Jabba, he, f- he ruled with fear. I will rule with respect. I thought that was pretty good. Mm. Uh, so that. Yeah. And I, and I do agree that, like, the the uh, overlap between fear and authority, how it's kind of... No, power and authority. Well, right, but yeah. uh, power, that kind of power often breeds fear, yeah. just in, in followers. Um, so the difference between power and authority yeah. uh, really is you respect one, and then you are scared uh, if you don't follow the other that he's going to beat your ass. Which he, Tommy proves when they're in the diner. I think it's the first time we see him, right? Is in the diner? Um, when, he, when he goes and he's like, everybody shut up, I'm yeah. having a conversation. I think so. I think, I know, I, we may have seen him in the opening. Okay. But, yes. Okay. Well, the diner scene. Um, and basically, he tells everybody to shut up. And then there's this one, like, couple mm-hmm. who is talking quietly. And um, he gets up and is like, tell your little woman to shut up, I'm having a conversation. And um, she doesn't. And so then Tommy basically bashes this guy's head against the... Doesn't kill him. Doesn't even bleed, I don't think. Mm. But it is this um, display of insane power. And not even... Real, it's not even really power. It's basically just everybody's afraid to do anything. So he gets his way. Right. Whereas, which, which it, I guess is power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then Pete and, and, and uh, Steve... And this is the same thing in Boba Book of Boba Fett too, is instead of casting away these people, they treat them with kindness and give them respect to begin with, which in turn breeds respect for the leaders. Right. Well, and it's because these these hierarchies that are built on power, they're unsustainable. And we and we actually see this in uh, chimp societies too. Um, is that, you know, there's the dominant male uh, chimp and the one that, you know, holds total like control over the other chimps there like they they rise up against him and and you know they kill him one be, could say be, rise of the apes yeah rise of the of the jungle of the apes um but what and it's interesting because it's like yeah that we see that happening in in you know human history you know when when somebody at the top becomes far too powerful without you know what any consideration about the people under them then the people under them you know they rise up and then they take over, and then it's a new regime, essentially. Yeah, right? we, we yeah we see this uh, we see this in I don't know if it's Rise or Fall I don't know which one it is Planet of the Apes the new ones where basically uh, Black Panther two and uh, we see basically the leader who is respected is killed and then they're dead 
And so the, the, the ruler who leads with power and fear takes over, and everybody's miserable. Yeah, that was Dawn. That was, was the Dawn? sequel. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and basically, what ends up happening is that the, the leader comes back, and everybody, seeing that the leader they respect is still alive, turn their backs on the current leader, the one that leads with power, and the one that leads with power, they're... The one that leads with power is completely overthrown, relatively easily. Um, now I'm sure there's casualties and whatnot, but right, you know, um, even even uh, in Black Panther specifically, um, uh, Okoye, uh, after um, T'Challa is supposedly killed, I, f- I forget uh, what his little girlie's name is, but she's like, "Aren't you gonna leave?" And Okoye says. Uh, my allegiance is not to the king, but to Wakanda. Uh, which she's saying that even though there's a bad man in power, my allegiance is to the country, and I will protect the country, uh, regardless who's at rule. Yeah. And so, when T'Challa shows back up, her that her ethics on that are almost almost compromised. Uh, now. The challenge isn't over, so technically the child is still king, so you, there's a little bit of gray area. But theoretically, she compromises her ethics and is like, you know what? That guy's got my respect, so I'm going to fight for him, mm-hmm. even if I am compromised. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and I just, I think that's a kind of an interesting parallel. I also think it's, you know, I, I touched on this earlier that, you know, there's this, like, dangerous element that's attractive. Um to uh, Elijah Wood's character. And um, I, I, I think uh, that could be because he, you know, he has like a really bad relationship with his father yeah. and uh, worse than his sister, actually. She even says it, that, you know, he, he held on to that, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the bad feelings from that longer than she did. And, um, and, you know, he's trying to go into the same uh profession that his dad was in and then he got kicked out you know because he was not not even of his own accord right no because he was too meek and he didn't you know want to fight for himself um and i and i think maybe you know his dad wasn't around a lot um and i think maybe he's he was lacking that that masculine element um and he went from one extreme to the other certainly but yeah um in the end it seems that he's found some sort of balance after seeing the dangers of both sides. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that, and that, you know, like you just said it perfectly, that, and that ties back into exactly what we said at the top of the episode uh, of what this film is about, too, mm. you know, learning how to fight and then knowing when to fight. Right. Um, which which is, is crucial, um, because there, there, there certainly are things worth fighting for, and it, it is not necessarily a physical fight, although if you believe it strong enough, then yes, you know, that's that's right. your last resort, but... There, there are things in life worth fighting for, and if you don't believe that, then, you well, know... Then what are you? Well, it's it's more so than, you know, why, why do anything, yeah. you know? If, if, what you, if what you care about and what you uh, have dreams for or whatever your goals are, if you're not willing to, to fight to bring those into reality, then maybe, maybe you don't have those dreams or maybe you don't have those goals. Maybe you don't care about that, you know? Yeah, you know, and it's... I think I'm I'm trying to think. I, I don't think there was a major reason why uh GSE fought Millway though all those ten years ago when, when Joey, whatever his name is, uh was killed. I think literally Pete is like, Yeah, we, we just wanted to fight him and so we did. And there may have been um some more tension than there was before, but there really isn't there isn't a reason the 10 years ago that there was a reason in the last fight or even the one before that um, it's revenge for Joey for, for Millway. But, but 10 years ago it was just like, Oh, we got to fight them. And so I think even the, the firm as a whole progressed to that point where I was like, when to fight and not just fighting for the sake of fighting. Right. Right. Which is important because if you fight for everything, then everything is nothing. Is yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything. Who, uh, who who is it? Um, it's a uh, if everybody's super, then nobody's super. That's syndrome. 
from the Incredibles. Yeah. All right. Throw that. Throw him up. I'll give them heroics. I'll give them the most spectacular heroics anyone's ever seen. And when I'm old and I've had my fun, I'll sell my invention so that everyone can be superheroes. Everyone can be super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. <laughs> throw that clip up. Um, I was just uh, quickly reading into uh, <clears throat> some of the real uh, firms. Uh, apparently, they are referred to as uh, uh, it's referred to as football hooligan hooliganism. Uh, I don't think that Green Street is is real. I'm not sure. Uh, Jared, who's a big uh, you know soccer guy, uh, he told me it wasn't real, but Millwall is, and they are the one of the most uh, notorious ones in real life. Uh, but yeah, I was just kind of reading into like how bad some of the stuff got and they've been around since like the sixties, but they kind of died out a little bit around the uh, late eighties. But, um, in 1985, a, uh, 14 year old boy died in a stadium when the stadium wall collapsed, uh, tumbling as a result of Leeds fans being pushed up against the wall by police. And a lot of these, like, firms, uh, it's resulted in a lot of police injury. Like, that one alone it had, like, over 100 people injured. And Millwall, uh, in, like, one night alone, I think, uh, injured around, like, 500. Which is fucking crazy. Wow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All over football. Ooh. Yeah. Football. Yeah, they're going to they're get me now. What is um, to them. No, well, I'm, I'm making fun of them for their culture. Yeah. Well, again, I mean... It, it does seem crazy, but, uh, you know, in, in that sense, so does any religion. Because at that point, to them, that is essentially a religion. Yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. And, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I think um, it's almost more cult following. It, yeah, yes, yes. Which turn into religion. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. there mm -hmm. you go. Because, again, you got your following, you got your rituals, you got the fellowship, and then you got the rivals, mm -hmm. you know? But, uh... There was a little bit of police um, involvement in this film. Not a whole lot enough, I don't even think, to merit real discussion. Yeah, they were never around when someone fucking died. Yeah, so. that's true. <laughs> they were around when Bava was sleeping, though, on the bench. Yeah. Um, but I, I was looking at what you had up here, Chris. So there is one called uh, Chelsea mm -hmm. something. They're in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. There was, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it, too. Okay, Chelsea Headhunters. When he is getting mugged by the Birmingham fellows, they uh, they give him what they call a Chelsea grin, and they take out a credit card mm. and they shove it in his mouth and like cut the sides of his lips. Yep. So that's pretty rough. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually how the Joker got his scars. Yeah, he got a that. Chelsea grin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want to know how I got in, in, these scars? In Birmingham, Alabama. It was the though. Chelsea grin of uh, Birmingham, my, Alabama. Mary! My Mary, father, do you want to know how I got these scars? My father liked football. My father liked football, Mary. He, uh, he was a part of the uh, well, Chelsea Headhunters. Yeah, and the Chelsea Headhunters. 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 Uh, <laughs> Chelsea Headhunters. Yeah, uh, brother. Yeah, um... They were one of the most feared in the 80s, and uh, th throughout history, uh, they have had strong links to white supremacist organizations. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Which, I, yeah. you know, I don't know the connection between this, but the, the uh, Birmingham fellows that give uh, Frodo the Chelsea grin were indeed black. Hmm. I don't know what that means. I don't but, know enough about like English like culture in the in the modern you know times yeah 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 me either yeah but that's also the thing. they do real like the Chelsea headhunters have done real terrorist shit uh, it says in 2014 the headhunters were in what over football yes yes in 2014 the headhunters were involved in pre in pre planned violence in France before a Champions League. <laughs> With around 300 hooligans entering France through Belgium to avoid detection. That's like some war shit. I yeah. know! 
Oh my I know. God. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I mean, Jake. if you're going to like, you know, kill and, and, and terrorize over shit, make it something a little less lame than football. I mean, we kill over drugs. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, Guy's like, yo, shit. give me some weed. And he's like, no, bro. Kablooey. Yeah. Kablam. Skibbity bop. Skibbity football bop. teams. We got the Bloods and the Crips. Anyway. And they kill Bloods ridiculous. in the Crips with the silver spoon. <laughs> 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 MS-13 and the man in the moon. <laughs> uh, all right. You know, if you don't step up, you're going to be dead. I'm going to put credit card in your head. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to have a blood and I'll grade. hit you if you don't like yeah. red. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys. Do you have anything else for this film? Um, oh. We should probably cut out those last few I don't think seconds. So. Nah, nah, it's fine. We, um, have, we have guns. The guy. There were no guns on set. I will say this: this film made me proud to be an American because oh, yeah. I'm I'm more proud of of my country's gangs. Oh, than, oh, you're a jacket of people football now. England's gangs. The guy who cause... plays uh, Pete's brother was in Doctor Who on the episode where his girlfriend turned into a cement head and she That's can only give where him he's head. From. Yeah, I realized like halfway through, I was like, oh. That's the guy with the with the Elton. with the cement head Elton. girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, Elton. Yeah. Well, Charlie Dunham um, is King Arthur and Arthur Legend of the Sword. Oh yeah, I think I think mm. this may have been his debut. Huh? Maybe hmm. wrong. Wait, is that the one that was directed by the guy who did uh, Kingsman? I don't know. It's the it's the it's the one that's King Arthur Legend of the Sword, and it's like it's got the it's sword. cool CGI it, stuff. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That yeah, is that, that is. I enjoy that movie. It does not have good critic reviews. Uh, I enjoyed it. CGI was cool. Yeah, it was, it was a fun Action scenes were cool. Arthur, cool twist on it. Music mm-hmm. is awesome, I think. <laughs> was it better the than devil... Green Knight? That's a different type of that's movie. A, yeah. Oh. That's not a movie yeah. I watched to enjoy. Right. Mm-hmm. And now I did enjoy it. I did enjoy the part where he came in his hand. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like... And what? <laughs> Editor. Uh, yeah, the, the best, best the, the best part was seeing that on like a sixty foot screen uh, too. Next yeah. year, next year, best buds. <laughs> like, yeah. we were, I think that was when uh, like a girl walked out of the theater. Yeah, yeah. When that so happened. many people walked out of that theater. Yeah. During the movie, <laughs> that was the first time I ever saw that. When that, when that happened, I said, "Guys, uh, I have to go to the bathroom." <laughs> Other guys come turns you on. <laughs> uh, disgusting! In a, in a, disgusting! In a, in a very straight way. Yeah. <laughs> not not that well, right. Yeah. That reminds me of my cum. I'd like to see it again. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh no! What have we become? <laughs> what are we rating this movie? <laughs> come. What are we rating this movie? <laughs> Did, is it? Did y'all have anything else? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I, I was okay. Much... To to re to 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 put it aptly in just a quick little phrase that you can carry in your back pocket and whip it out whenever you want to. A strong man knows how to fight, <laughs> but a stronger man knows when to fight. Yeah, you happy that, that you finally got one? That. Yeah, you finally got a nice little phrase. Yeah, here you go. You can. This is we're. This is what it's gonna be. Oh, this is what we're gonna symbolize it as. Okay, put that in your back pocket. And now you do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, rate rate this movie, Jake. Scale of uh, 1 to 10. I'd give it a 7. 7? Yeah, I'd give it a 6. I'll, I'll meet you guys halfway. 6.5. Okay. Fair enough. And uh, uh, It would be higher. It, honestly, it would be higher if I could understand what they were saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're just not British. That's oh, not my fault. But... Anyway. Uh, how, okay. We have to do this rap. Britishly. Okay. British, so how, Britishly. How do, we, how do we do? What's a British like beat? How do you do that? Skip it up, get up, 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 and a ting, ting, boom, bop, and skrrrrrrrr. Two plus two equals four minus one. That's three quick maths. Skip it up, boom, 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 boom. Okay, okay. I'll, said, I'll get you a British beat. Wait, this thing goes skrrrrrr. Skip up, 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 up. Because yes. Go and put that up. Put that up. Put that up. Skip it up. Hold up. Bop, bop, bop. Said my name. 
Pop is Mikey McBop. Skilly Pop, 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 Pop,